when it comes to investing in leadership and culture development, mm-hmm. what criteria would determine the value of the training? Is it, let me put this another way. What no, would make it, the training? Oh, you got it. Okay. Yeah. Great. <laughs> I mean, so I'm ADHD and dyslexia, so the words are already moving in my head, so it makes sense. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, here's what I think would make me think that, you know, it's a worthy investment. If the leaders or the, anybody, like for me, everybody's a leader that's working in, with me because they have their own journey to grow. And if they're able to tap into more of their potential, if they have found their voice and confidence, but also their ability to express not just the tactical stuff, everybody can be tactical. You can hire someone who's great at the software and everything. But in their leadership styles and their ability to connect and their ability to stand for themselves and their ability to think outside the box. So because I mean, you run a branding and design. So I require people who can not just design well, but who can think differently, who can mm-hmm. take two different objects and try to make sense of it and who are not afraid of sharing their voice, who are not afraid of taking up challenges because that's what I do. Like I don't go with easy clients. I don't deliver mediocrity. And I put a post about this a few days ago as well. If I wanted to deliver mediocrity, I would have stick to just downloading a course online. The reason I invest so much in myself, the reason I charge what I charge is because I take this much time to make sure that you're not mediocre, to make sure that you are different. To create mediocrity, I could pay someone $10 and call this branding. But it takes time to make you innovative because you're innovative. You're complex and you require that complex solution as well. So nice. if my team could do the same thing, and it has happened where we will, we sometimes bring in other strategists who specialize in a particular field and we ask them to share their approaches, their way of thinking. It helps me see how they are actually implementing their thinking process, not their execution style, but their thinking process because strategic thinking is not something that can be taught by a course, but that is something that is facilitated within people. It's not just determined by a framework. It is something that happens through people. So if I can have someone when they can help my team members think differently, be more innovative, that's what I know that this is a good investment because mm-hmm. this pays off right away. This pays off right away because it takes time to cultivate and compound and everything, but it pays off right away because my team members are already thinking, how can they be different? How can they be better at what they do at how as themselves as individuals? Mm-hmm. And so they stop fighting and they start uh, compounding by themselves. So that's what's important for me. Nice. I really like that. So um, let me think here. Okay, great. Love that answer. You are good at this. And, and you know, <laughs> I, it, that's the thing. I'm the same way. I don't really believe in false flattery. That doesn't yeah. mean I don't seek to identify what somebody is great at. But if I don't mean yeah. it, I usually don't say it unless it's unless it's somebody's clearly delicate feelings. Mm-hmm. And the the only cost that it would be is for me to tell a white lie to save somebody's feelings. Other yeah. than that, I usually don't do it so that when people hear what I say, when I say what I say, people will understand that I actually mean it because that's no. who who I am. And yes. what you talked about mediocrity, I use a word that's probably less popular and more harsh. It's just like, I don't want to do stuff that sucks. I don't want to be, (laughs) I don't want to be a bad teacher, even just for English. Like the industry standard is so low that when I say, well, you know, I'm not really going to spoon feed them the language. I want them to struggle with it. I will always help, but I'll help only and if they need it after the effort has come. That is when they're stretching their own potential at that top edge. Yeah. And then if they don't get it, there's no, there's no cost for them making a mistake or not being able to do it. But yeah. there is an insistence on my part when I'm teaching and I have full autonomy to just go, look, this is the way I do it. And I will even fire students or clients if it's like, if you want something much more half-assed, I'm just really not the right person to do it for you because <laughs> I want to be proud of what I've done. So I I totally identify with what you're saying. <laughs> I love that because we, uh, like one of my students really loves this line. I stole him once. Uh, I tell this to my clients very a lot of times. I'm not going to create something that's shitty because it's not just going to be your work. It's going to go up on my website. And I don't want to spend my time creating something that I would be ashamed to put on my website. Right. (laughs) So so be sure that I'm going to deliver great things for you, but don't ask me to create stupid things for you. I'll create something that will help you and it'll be awesome, but I'm not going to create something because your competitor has the same thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If it's a template that you can do yourself in five minutes, why did you hire me? Yes. Right. 
Okay, so the next one is sort of a three-parter, and it really depends how you answer it, whether it's mm -hmm. three parts or two parts or one part. Yep. So this this is, 